Hi, what holiday gift giving season would be complete without mailbag? Everyone's favourite segment here on the EEV blog. So let's see what Santa bought. Oh. Ladies, fellow bloggers, and coolest item first. This one has the triple whammy from, everyone should know this name, Fran Blanche from Philly in the US. If I know I sound like a local to Philly. I'm not saying, you know, sorry, I can't do a Philadelphia accent, but um, I know what's in this one, and sorry to the uh, rest of the mailbag participants, I'm sure your items are cool too, but I think this will be the coolest item, because I know what's in it, and if you've seen Fran's uh, videos recently, which her channel will be linked down below, um, then if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's well worth your while. Um, yeah, I, if you've seen her videos, then you might know, possibly, what is in here. Ta-da! Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. We'll read a letter. She's got a letter. But, oh, oh, we have bits. We have bits, which we'll take a look at. Oh, more bits. Jeez. Oh, more bits. Hang on, hang on. Where's, where's the where's the good stuff? Where's the good stuff? Swag for you. That could be what I'm after. No, hang on, there's more. But wait, there's more. No, I think that's what we're after. Oh, God, and it reminds me of like a caching container. Geocaching container. And I've got swag. There's a whole bunch of, oh, yeah, a whole bunch of Franz merch by the looks of it. And anything else left in there? Jeez, she's really gilded the lily here but what's inside here let's take a look it is without even reading her letter which is a bit rude of me i should read the letter first but no let's get straight into the hardware because everyone wants to see it this is ta-da the saturn 5 lv dc controller board oh well, check it out. This is what uh, Fran has been working on recently, and she's got her videos of uh, got tons of views because of this um, how she's been reverse engineering this original Apollo era uh, Saturn V LVDC controller. Awesome, and she has sent it on to me because we're doing. Uh, she wants to do like a thing where it it passes from. Uh, you know, blogger to blogger, basically, and um, uh, seeing what uh, people can do with it. But this is the original one that she's been working on, and she's uh, finished all her videos, uh, which I said will be linked in down below, and she's done a ton of reverse engineering work on this, and, well, I am the next in line. Awesome. Thanks, Fran. So a quick look at some of the other stuff we've got here. We've got a bag of, well, yeah, she's marked it for us, early 70s LEDs and other stuff. Awesome. I'll take a few of those out in a second and check it out. There's the little bubble display. Aha! I've got one of those. I think I've got a national, I think it might be a national semiconductor one. I don't know. I've got one somewhere. Uh, we've got, uh, what's this? Like crazy, man. What is it? It looks like a TO92. Translucent red package. Is that like a a lead in a in a tea or a, some sort of uh no, yeah, it looks like a lead, but it looks of the dye in there. It looks like some sort of lead or something like that. I have to power that up. Awesome. And uh MPS A42 for Nixie's. Aha! Nixie tube uh driver transistors. That's what must be in here. We must have Electron tube NL. These must be Nixie tubes. Awesome. I don't have any Nixie tubes. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's just gorgeous. We'll have to do a separate video lighting up and powering those suckers. Oh, terrific. And some of her swag cards, Fran Tone Electronics, since 1994, has been delivering great tone all over the world, manufacturing complete handmade analog effects built entirely in the United States of America. Awesome, yes, because Fran's into uh, music and uh, effects, um, uh, pedals and stuff like that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. There you go. There's another card as well. Oh, we forgot to see. There we go. Some photos of some of her 
stuff. There we go. Germanium fuzz, fantastic original overdrive, lead tone, ring modulator, classic amp, uh, vibrato compressor, and fat distortion. Pink makes it sound, I don't know, more feminine, perhaps? Hmm, they look almost good enough to eat. Look at that. Brilliant. Oh, and we have a typewritten letter. Look at this, the old typewriter. Fantastic, I love it. Dave, please find and close the LVDC page assembly board, which I have packed up carefully. is missing some logic devices that I have pulled and depotted uh, to depot, which will be going to Jerry, as in Jerry Ellsworth, with her scanning electron microscope. Yes, I think uh, Jerry wanted a couple of the chips. So, as you, could, as you saw, there's a few of the uh, chips missing off there. They do actually just slide out of the... Uh, pin holders in there that Fran eventually uh, found out. I also enclosed some choice relics from my personal collection of the earliest lead days. Fantastic. Some are Monsanto. Monsanto. Oh, I've never heard of Monsanto apart from the evil, um, you know, genetically modified food company. Monsanto. Oh, they're freaking evil, let me tell you. Um, a Fairchild ad. I know that you have much fun putting some currents through those little wonders. Awesome. Uh, I also include a bag of my favourite lead of all time, a TR, ah, TO220 case red display. Oh, I'm going to have to power that up in a minute. Real component porn, crazy and beautiful. You might also find some interesting odds and ends in the bag. It's just kind of stuff I keep around here at the Fran Lab. And yes, she does invite people to the Fran Lab, I believe. So check it out. Lastly, she's in close stock of Jan Nixie tubes for you to tinker with, along with a bunch of uh, those uh, high voltage transistors you'll need for the cathode switching. These displays work well on 200, 300 volts DC and 50 volts pre vice for the cathode. Woohoo! I've never played with Nixie tubes before, so this will be fun. Um, I'm very eager to see what you come up with the PCB. It is a community project, as I explained, so when you are done exploring the board, please pass it on to another engineer. If you want the board, then uh, please uh, contact me if you think you can um, add some value after I've finished with this uh, LVDC board. Um, that's the whole idea. So I've got to choose someone to ship it to. It's my responsibility now. With the agreement that they will pass it on to and so forth, like the World Cup of Space Artifacts. And Dave, that page assembly board, don't turn it on, take it apart. Ah, it's already been hacked quite a lot. But yeah, sure there's still more to be done. Well, there you go. I've put 20 milliamps through one side of this thing, and uh, there's a tiny little uh, lead dot. I mean, this is not bright at all. I mean, it just starts at, I can start seeing it at a couple of milliamps, and uh, run into 20 milliamps. I'm not sure what the maximum is on this sucker. I'm sure I could uh, sacrifice one to find out, but uh, it's not very bright at all, and it comes out the side of that package. You can't, uh, you can't see anything on the bottom of course, or on the uh, top, well you can see a little bit on the top, but it's designed as a side emitter in a TO92 package. I'm not sure what the design intent for this thing was, but it's ancient, you know, it's one of the first early uh, LEDs, and uh, it's rather, you know, it's it's absolutely piss weak. So, <laughs> as far as modern LEDs go, it's uh, absolutely hopeless, but it is fascinating. And there it is up close, and it is a 3 litered device but I can't get the other lead to do anything so I'm not sure not sure what the deal is there fascinating why they designed it into a TO92 case like that and is that you know have they attempted to put some sort of little uh, lens on the top there if they have it's not doing much at all maybe that's just the regular molding process of the transistor I don't know and that's our Nixie tube, the NL5961, made in the US of A. And, uh, wow, look at the construction of that puppy. Very nice. Is that a, no, that can't be a date code. It's not 80, it wouldn't be 86, would it? But, uh, yeah, look at that, beautiful. That's going to look awesome when it's all lit up. Oh, can't wait. Definitely have to do a separate video on that. There's a close-up view inside one of the depotted chips on the LVDC, and you can see all this in uh, Fran's video, which I'll link in down below. She's uh, x-rayed them and depotted and uh, reverse engineered and confirmed the um, uh, circuitry in there. And you can see the uh, die, of course. It's all uh, diode transistor logic, all old-school DTL stuff. I mean, there's nothing serious here, but like in terms, you know, 
uh, in terms of you know processor technology or anything like that. These are just you know uh, discrete uh, diodes uh, basically and uh, discrete resistors in a package. So you can see the Apollo era technology was not a challenge in well it was probably a challenge just creating the um you know the silicon there the individual uh diodes on the small scale and the resistors on a chip level like that because you can see that there's no other uh actual parts on this uh, no uh, passive parts on this board but uh, they've integrated that into the chip but that wasn't the issue actually getting them that small the issue was actually interfacing with the rest of the system getting them onto a bloody pcb and out through this huge multi-way connector down here and into the rest of the system so each one of these chips didn't do much at all there's only you know a, a handful at most of you know a diode transistor logic in there you know a couple of gates or something like that at most some inverters and things like that friends uh, decoded a couple of the chips and and figured out what they do and they're nothing more than sort of you know the equivalent of uh, you know modern sort of uh, TTL uh, type 4000 series type uh, logic really except with uh, DTL so really you know all they got a bunch of uh, trans you know handful literally of transistors I don't think any of these even reached uh, double digits in terms of their uh, transistor count or their uh, gate count so really you know really small scale stuff and you needed a lot of these boards to you know get one system so they're you know they built these chips you know all integrated you know they're reasonably good but then how do you get the thing integrated into an entire system that is the pain in the ass and of course to build a working computer with this thing you've got to have associated core memory and uh, stuff like that but it's effectively a computer built up with all discrete logic gates and they needed you know dozens or hundreds of these cards all together to make a crude computer and well it's just absolutely fascinating stuff there's uh, no chips on the bottom they've just got uh, some sort of covering which uh, Fran has obviously removed there I uh, don't recall her videos I have to re-watch them all before I uh, start working on this puppy but anyway really fascinating stuff Fran's done x-rays and all sorts of uh, great stuff reverse engineering this so please check out those videos the links will be down below and hopefully I can do something um, will add some value to it but Fran's already done a ton of stuff so I'm not sure uh, what aspect I'm going to uh, tackle this thing on if you've got any idea, good ideas leave it in the comments so thank you very much Fran for passing that on I will uh, endeavour to do some future videos on this before I hand it off to someone else and as I said if uh, anyone wants to get this after me uh, please drop me an email thank you very much Fran what an awesome bit of uh, uh, mailbag item and quite a few things I can do future videos on beauty I was just thinking it comes in an ESD shielded bag I mean would ESD have even been an issue back then at the huge I mean you know massive scale that these uh, chips are at I mean ESD becomes a uh, problem you know the smaller uh, geometries manufacturing geometries you, you go with your uh, silicon and there's other aspects to it I wonder if um, they had even encountered ESD problems back in the day of all this Apollo hardware we've got a neat little collection of uh, bubble display technology here and you can see why because uh, why it's called that I'm not sure of the proper term I've always called them bubble displays they've got like lenses on the top because these are our seven segment displays and I'll show you a uh, I'll zoom in and show you closer inside these things but it basically they back then the seven segment displays are really tiny in sort of the uh, you know the die sort of form so they use these lenses on top to give you a you know a um, <laughs> a multi-digit lead display like this and these were very popular back in the day and there's uh, multiple versions of those and check that one out these ones don't have a like a lens uh, bubble thing they've just got like a clear you know in encapsulant on top of that so they haven't magnified the size of uh, those ones at all they're just like a clear acrylic block on top of that but that is your traditional uh, bubble type display with a you know lens that like doubles the size of the or it doubles the appearance of the size of the internal uh, seven segment display and there you go you can see down into the individual bubble down in there and if I just see focus manually on that you can see the see the actual die in there 
Absolutely fascinating in attaching to the individual lead segments and the bond wires. Awesome. And there's the red base one. And you can see the multiplexed uh, traces running inside here. And they just, you know, attach over because these are all uh, multiplex displays that don't have enough uh, pins to get all the uh, segment data out. But let's have a look at the third one here, which is, uh, look at that. Inside a clearer capsule. And so it's basically the same thing. And in fact, these are... These two are identical, except one's got a red display and one is a just got a clear window on it. So one's uh, diffused and uh, one isn't. But look at that, you can see all the detail in there. Neat. It looks like it has three, indi almost looks like it has, you know, like three individual emitters in there. But as I, you know, I'm not quite sure. You'd have to power that up. And it does. Check that out. I've uh, got 20 milliamps flowing through that individual segment and you can see... The four different uh, individual emitters in there lighting up. Brilliant. And you can see the same thing happening on the red display, but it, yeah, it does look better and more uh, diffuse when it uh, goes through that red perspex. And the bubble display there, you can see that that's much more even. I can't see individual emitters down there. If I turn the current uh, down, right down, I mean, I've only got that, I've now got that at one milliamp flowing through there and you can see the reflection off the lens at the top there and obviously it's designed to look directly down into it but that is that is quite fascinating and pretty efficient down at one milliamp that's not bad at all and what do we have here looks like another nixie tube type display it's an rca numitron dead giveaway that it's a numeric uh display does it have enough Pins, two, four, six, eight, nine. Yep, that's enough for a uh, seven-segment display. So we'll have to, uh, well, obviously we can't uh, power this thing up. It's going to need a uh, Nixie tube driver, but I might Google that, see if there's any data. And yes, I found the data sheet on this, and yes, it is a Nixie display, but it's not a seven-segment one, which you can tell by looking on the uh, overside. This is model is DR2130, and I'll link in the data sheet for this but if we zoom in there you can clearly see the wires in there look at that check it out you can see two wires in there for the display and really it's all it is is a cross there it is like that and that's exactly what this tube does it's a plus display plus or minus of course you could uh, i assume you can light up each segment individually but it's not a seven segment display all it does is a plus so that'd be used in a multimeter or something like that you know plus or minus you know two volts on your multimeter and some 1976 vintage seven segment displays these look like your traditional lead seven segment display that you'd get these days so yeah really you know that's when the technology uh, came of age to be uh you know modern as we know it today check out this tiny monsanto mv5080 lead Look at that. Oh, it's teeny tot. And check out this seven segment display package with the st staggered pins like that. Jeez. Oh, man. This would actually make it probably a good photo thumbnail for my uh, mailbag video. But that looks quite neat. Look at that. Seven segment display in a weird ass staggered pin package. And ah, uh, somebody, I won't even try and pronounce that last name, from Germany. Hi to all my German viewers. And uh, yes, Australia, not Austria. The joke never gets old. It doesn't. It pisses off a lot of people, and that's why I still do it. So let's uh, let's crack this sucker open and see what Mr. R has sent us. Okay, this is... Uh, how do I get that open? There you go, like that. Rip it open. Arrgh. And... Ta-da! It's a power cord. Why? Do I have a power cord? I'm going to have to read the note. Hmm. This is mysterious. Hi Dave, something for your pleasure of investigating odd things. This cable is indeed odd. Hmm. No matter how much I bang my head onto the table, it just doesn't uh, match the writings on the plug. Hint, it came from China. Thank you very much, Robert. So, what? It doesn't match? They got the wiring wrong? Huh. Probably. For starters, let's check the earth pin here. Yeah, the earth pin's okay. That's all good. No worries. So I don't know what the uh, 
Don't know what the drama is. Well, you know, they could swap active and uh, neutral. There we go. And of course, it's not going to there, so I, I don't know what the don't know what the deal is. Um, well, that's just dodgy connection, but what's the... I don't get it. That seems fine to me, unless they're swapped active and neutral. Sorry, I don't know the uh, which way around is uh, supposed to be what for this particular plug, but th th it looks okay. Huh? Said it doesn't match the writings on the plug, but the plug, it looks like just a whole bunch of usual uh, safety paraphernalia on there and various uh, standards approval, so there's no... I don't get it. I mean, these are pretty wimpy. I mean, these are, you know, these are not, you know, this is not like one square millimeter of copper in this thing. This is very wimpy uh, mains wire indeed. So uh, maybe that's what uh, Robert is referring to. You can see that it's rated there uh, 10 amps to 16 amps at 250 volts. Well, I think that's a that's a crock because uh, this wire in here is absolutely tiny. I think it's rated as 0.5 mil square millimeters on the cable. Yep, there it is. Three times 0.5 square millimeters. I mean, to my eye, uh, that looks pretty wimpy. I'm going to have to check this against a real half square millimeter cable. Well, I'll cut open another branded cable here. There you go. And it is uh, exactly the same spec. Three uh, uh, strands of 0.5 square millimeters. Let's compare the two. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> no contest. I thought it looked pretty darn wimpy. And well, yeah, I mean, this is half a square millimeter, which is, you know, like a really good proper mains rated uh, cable would be one square millimeter, of course. And this one, you know, this is half a square millimeter. So this is like a genuine half square millimeter. And this thing, you know, I'm not going to get out the calipers and measure it, but oh my goodness, that is just shocking. What is that? I mean, you know, if this is half a square millimeter, what's this? You no, know, 0.2 square millimeters tops, 0.15, something like that. There's no way it can meet those markings. Oh, one hung low piece of shit. Unbelievable. But of course, you know, not surprising because copper is actually really, really expensive and to make these cables is not cheap people you know uh, uh, you get all these um uh, all these computer cables and stuff and they give them away and you know chuck them around like candy but copper is actually very expensive and they've really skimped there unbelievable you gotta watch out this cheap shit really that's just awful next up we have one from ludzing not sure if that's first or last name from uh, hewitt in south australia and my fellow cobber yeah on your cobber no worries mate She'll be right. Let's crack this thing open. It feels like there's nothing in here. I mean, uh, it's, you know, it's completely flat. And uh, there's a note. There's no goodies. Could just be a note. There's nothing. I swear. There's nothing in there. Let's have a look. No. There we go. We've got something. Oh. 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 It's a... Um, I, know, I know what this is. This is a uh, soda can, as you Yanks uh, call them. Um, uh, converted into a stainless steel stencil. Oh, that looks like the microcurrent. That looks like my new microcurrent arrangement. It is. <laughs> Brilliant. Unfortunately, it's not my super duper latest because I did slightly change a few things. But let's read the note. Hi, Dave. Been following your microcurrent progress and with Christmas season upon us and Kickstarter demand ramping up, me thinks you will be using your reflow oven. I certainly will. So to help, I'm sending you a solder stencil I whipped up here in my lunch break on the day before close down, just like how I blogged about it here. There you go. Check it out. I'll provide the link down below. Yes, it was a boost to hear you and Chris discuss this briefly on the amp hour. My suggestion would be to try in the green PCB cart you tweeted about just in case it goes horribly wrong. Yeah, that's the only one I can... Well, no, I can use it for my uh, red boards, but I'm getting... I've just ordered a new uh, panel, a bunch of new panels with just some slight uh, differences. So it won't uh, precisely match those, but it will match the old boards. Um, uh, two round tooling holes would be used in a jig I designed, but not had the chance to mill. So apologies for that. No worries. Yeah. Old fashioned tape and stencil. Yeah. Tape and stencil just works fine. So thank you very much. Oh, Simon. There we go. Ludzink. Blogs bot.com.au. So yes, this is all the rage. You can actually uh, chemically etch these things and you can do it at home doing your own uh, stainless steel 
stencil and apparently it's not too bad at all and that does look like decent quality let's get the macro lens so there you go you can see the sort of like uh you know it's not like a laser um etched thing it's not as uh, sharp as that but you know that's going to probably still do a reasonable job it's a bit rough and ready on the edges there they certainly aren't uh, even but for doing your own home boards that is probably going to work a treat you can see the other side there is uh, much sharper than the top side so that's what you want and we have to move along because uh, Fran hogged the first part of the blog thank you very much Fran from uh, Naga Industries Proprietary Limited uh, trading as Fusion Gear another one from Adelaide jeez Adelaide's getting a bit of a bull here on oh, this episode jeez it's going wrong yeah let's crack this open another note and ta -da, nothing we got just a note sharpening stone oh i was queued up about this one yes um he was annoyed enough that i didn't um you know that i had my swiss army knife was blunt so i sent a sharpening stone thank you very much it was uh uh yes um it came oh no fusion gear that's right he um uh, drop shipped from an ebay shipper here in australia so he's not actually from uh fusion gear slash nada 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 naga industries um but there you go i can sharpen my knife because apparently it annoys people i think it's already sharp enough but hey beauty thanks Next up, we have a gift from Exmos. Exmos, as in the uh, chip company. So let's crack this open. Here we go. And we've got ourselves a starter kit. Oh, doesn't this look good? Look at this. Two four zone, two, uh, four zone touch sensors. We've got a Raspberry Pi GPI O uh, compatible header. Excellent, of course, it's got the um, Xmos uh, X-Core, Analog A8 dev with integrated debugger, awesome. Analog integration header, micro USB for power, a couple of green LEDs, and a Xmos slice card connector or GPIO. I assume they've got uh, compatible uh, cards. Looks like a little uh, PCI um, type slot there. And ta-da, there it is, using the starter kit. There you go, you can just go to xmos.com slash start kit. And I don't have any Xmos uh, stuff. So, there you go. I'll add this to my complement of, um, uh, you know, starter kits and dev boards to uh, play around with when projects arise. It's always handy to have like a whole bunch of uh, these dev boards, or at least I think so anyway, uh, lying around so that, you know, when, uh, when a project does come up, you know, you don't... Just go to the bin and go, oh, which one's most suitable? I know, I'll pick this one because it has X, you know? Awesome. Probably doesn't do much. I can uh, plug it in, but it's only got a couple of LEDs. It's not like it has any uh, significant display capability. And I just powered it up, and yeah, nothing's interesting. Really, it just uh, fades this uh, little display in and out there. Nothing that exciting at all. But the whole point of this is that um, it uses this uh, parallel XMOS processor and if you haven't seen these before these are incredibly powerful uh, 500 mips but there's actually eight 32-bit cores inside this thing so it's designed for parallel computing and it comes with the raspberry pi header because you can just plug it as a whatever the raspberry pi thing is called that uh, plugs in to the top of the uh, raspberry pi to allow uh, real-time parallel processing of the ios which of course the um, Raspberry Pi isn't capable of doing because it's a sequential processor. It's got to deal with the I.O. in turn. You know, it can't do computing functions on all the I.O. at once. But this board allows you to do that. 500 MIPS and 8 32-bit processor cores. Yes, and, and they're not ARM. They're actually an actual XMOS uh, processor core. So it's not based on ARM or anything like that. But really worth checking out if you're into that uh, parallel computing stuff. So thank you very much for... Uh, xmos for sending this one in oh and it's only 15 bucks awesome um yeah i'm not sure about the uh, compilers and all that sorry i don't have uh time to check into it right now but yeah that for 15 bucks phew, worth chucking in your kit that's for sure next up we have a big one from andreas Z zafiratos sorry i suck at pronunciations everyone laughs at me every time i try and do it from deutschland germany again one Drag up multi-worn broken. We have a broken multimeter. 
Awesome! We can check it out. I wonder what uh, brand it is. Well, let's go very quickly because my time is almost up here on the mailbag, folks. Literally, it is, you know, 3.41 p.m. the 24th of December, Christmas Eve here, folks. And yes, I've got to shoot off very shortly to a family uh, event. But uh, I do wish everyone a happy holidays or whatever thingo you do. Because, you know, I hate religion and don't do the whole religion thing. But I love Santa, of course. Santa's awesome. And let's check this out. Hi, Dave. First, I want to thank you for your great show. I learned much on your PCB tutorials. Awesome. It's all how all this creepy stuff works. It is kind of creepy, if you don't know. I work myself in a position on the board of a major electronics company. Awesome. So I have this stuff every day all around me. I can say I love it. I sent you, I think, some cool stuff for a new teardown. It's a Drager multi-worn two okay so it's not a multi i guess it's not a multimeter in our company we use these devices for self-protection for underground works unfortunately the device is broken repair was too expensive so we thought we bought some new ones awesome thank you very much andreas this is uh i thought it was a a multimeter oh geez there's a bit of weight in that let me tell you there is a bit of weight and it's a uh, right it's a multi-warn as in a warning system there you go <laughs> Awesome! Look at that. There you go. No wonder it's heavy. Two NICAD batteries in the thing. There you go. And it's, a, it's I guess, underground. Uh, Lübeck. Lübeck in Germany. I've been to Lübeck. Fantastic little town. I loved Lübeck. I spent a, uh, a day in Lübeck and I went to the, um, I went to an organ uh, recital at the church in Lübeck there. And that was uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, Multi-worn too. So what is it? Uh, it detects, you know, if it's an underground thing, it detects maybe some sort of gas or uh, or something like that. EX sensor. Yeah, it's got, it detects a whole bunch of stuff. That looks really interesting. Oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, geez. All right. It's got a warning Will Robinson light that uh, flashes, I'm sure. And uh, I guess it uh, it just sits there. I mean, there's the sensor top on it. That's interesting. It's almost as if like it rotates, but it looks like there's multiple sensors in there, possibly with filters or something like that, a big warning buzzer that goes, and that'll uh, scream at, you know, 100 decibels or something like that, I'm sure. But that is, uh, that's interesting for underground safety. I'm sure there's lots of, you know, a pr type approval and, uh, and stuff like that that has to go on to, uh, you know, to design and get one of these things approved. Anyway, I'm not going to take that apart. That will definitely make a uh, teardown. Tuesday, I've got to learn more about this, exactly what it uh, tests, and we'll have a look at the sensors and we'll tear it down because there's interesting engineering that goes into this sort of stuff. If it's underground mining, for example, it's got to be intrinsically safe and things like that. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. Thank you very much, Andreas. So thanks everyone for sending all these awesome mailbag items again. We've definitely got yet another whole bunch of videos. There's never any shortage of videos to do. There's always a huge backlog of videos. But we've got some real interesting stuff coming up. So yeah, I will be working over uh, Christmas uh, time. I am taking a little bit of a break in uh, early January. But uh, yeah, then I'll be back into it with all the Kickstarter. That'll all be happening. So very busy uh, times coming up. I'll be working my ass off, I'm sure. So, yeah, happy holidays, happy Festivus, which has passed on the 23rd, and uh, all that sort of stuff. I hope Santa brings you some cool stuff, or you get a vision from the flying spaghetti monster. May you be touched by his noodly appendage. Catch you next time.